Hello, welcome to Linux Mate. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to take a look at the process of compiling and installing a custom kernel on Arch Linux and its derivatives, such as Arco Linux, Manjaro, Endeavor OS, uh, etc. Um, oftentimes when people decide to build a custom Linux kernel, it's because their distribution is using an older kernel that doesn't have support for a specific piece of hardware built in, they need to compile in a new module, or something like that. Uh, this is rarely a problem on Arch because kernel updates are usually available within a week or two of being released, so you're generally up to date uh, with the latest kernel. Uh, however, that's not the only reason why you might want to build a custom kernel. Uh, Arch actually ships with a, quite a large kernel uh, with tons of features and hardware support built in that you'll never use. Now, this is nice uh, in a way because when you install Arch, you can be pretty sure that if Linux supports your hardware, uh, most of the time um, that support will be part of the, uh, the kernel, uh, the stock kernel. But um, the, the downside is uh, you end up with a very large kernel um, and uh, lots of stuff compiled in that you just never actually use. Um, it's also compiled for generic hardware, so uh, no hardware specific optimizations or anything have been um, have been done. So, uh, if you want a kernel that uh, is built specifically for your system, um, you want a small memory footprint, uh, that sort of thing. You're looking for more of a minimalist system and a minimalist kernel. Then building uh, your own kernel is uh, definitely a good option. Uh, today we will demonstrate how to download the latest uh, kernel sources, uh, how to configure your custom kernel, how to build it, and finally uh, how to install it on an, your Arch Linux system. Um, today we will be focused specifically on the process of building the kernel, uh, but we will uh, take a brief look at configuring uh, kernel features as well. So let's get started. Before we begin, uh, we need to make sure that we have all the dependencies installed that are required to build the kernel, um, specifically if you've never built a kernel um, on this box before. Um, so we will need to sudo pacman-s and we need the base devel package. Uh, we also need um, XML2, Kmod, uh, INET utils, BC, lib elf, and we'll go ahead and throw git on there as well. I already have these installed on my system. So I don't need to go through the process, but if you do not, then you'll want to make sure these packages are installed uh, prior to uh, proceeding any further with building your kernel. Now that we have our dependencies installed, we can go and download the source for the kernel we want to build. So we will grab that from kernel.org. Uh, this is the uh, site that uh, host the Linux kernel sources. You can download uh, the sources of the kernels for the various versions that are uh, still supported. As you can see 5.8.1 was just released. Um, we want um, 5.7.15. Uh, the virtual machine that I'm upgrading um, in this video uh, is currently on 5.7.12. So I will go with 5.7.15. Um, we need to download the tarball. So I will just grab the location. And we need to grab this file. That will give us all the files we need, the sources necessary to successfully build the kernel. So now that we have the URL um, for the uh, 
source file we need to download, we need to create a temporary directory where we can actually perform the build. And I'm going to call this kernel build. And we'll hop over there in the directory. And then we can perform the download. This should just take a minute. And so I'm going to stop the video. We'll be back in a minute. All right, so now that we've downloaded the kernel source, we can extract it into the current kernel build directory. And we do that with tar xvjf. And as you can see, the sources are being extracted. See a ton of different uh, device drivers in the source code. I think the Linux uh, source code is currently uh, at least it's about 30% device drivers. So, um, so now we have a new directory. Um, and we will hop in there. It's Linux 5.7.15. And um, our next step is to prepare the kernel uh, source tree for building. And we do this by using the command make. MR proper. This doesn't make clean. It does some other things to clean up the tree. Just takes a second. And our next task is to configure the kernel uh, to tell it which features and modules to build. Uh, in order to get a base configuration to use as a starting point, uh, we can extract the configuration from the currently running kernel. Uh, this is stored in the proc directory, which is a virtual file system that exposes information about your kernel and running processes. So, The file we're looking for is called config.gz. So let's hop over to proc and take a look. Um, config.gz is right here. If you do not have a config.gz file, that means that your kernel was uh, built not to expose its config. Um, fortunately, the Arch kernel uh, does expose config.gz, and so we have no problems there. So let's go back to our build directory. And we're gonna use a tool called Zcat which is similar to, uh, to cat, except it performs extraction at the same time. And we're going to redirect its output to a file called .config. And .config is the file that the, uh, the build process looks for in order to um, know how to config your kernel. Now let's take a look at uh, the .config file. As you can see here, uh, this is the file the compiler needs to build your custom kernel. Uh, each option has an individual line in this file. Um, and um, most of the options will be set equal to either a Y, an N, or an M. Uh, a Y indicates that the feature will be compiled into the kernel directly. An N means that the feature will be excluded. And an M means that the feature will be compiled as a loadable module. So it won't be part of the main kernel, but it will be loadable when it's needed. So I'm going to quickly disable a few uh, debug features that are not needed, which can generate some messy output uh, during boot. And so you can comment out features um, in the file by just using the pound sign. So I am looking for config debug. And let's have a look here. I'm looking for, I'm going to comment out this one here. 
one here as well. And this one. I think we're good. So we will save that. And since we are upgrading to a new kernel version, we need to make sure that all configuration options have values, all the options that are required. And we can do that by using the command make old def config. This just inspects the config file and makes sure that everything that's required is needed. Uh, if there are uh, options that require um, values and it needs your input it will ask you uh, it will prompt you in, um, for uh, each of the features uh, that it needs to be configured but uh, it will also provide you with default values so you don't necessarily have to um, have to know um, exactly what you need you just need to accept the default values and continue Before we proceed uh, any further, I would uh, just like to mention uh, that you can also generate a kernel config uh, based on your current hardware and running devices um, if you don't want to use the config uh, that comes with your kernel, uh, your, your current running kernel, or if your kernel does not provide that. And you can do that by um, using the command make local mod config. I'm not going to do this because I've uh, got a configuration that I want to keep, but you could use this command if, uh, if you want to have the uh, system to de automatically detect your hardware and create a kernel that just uses the running devices. The downside is that you won't uh, have any support compiled into your kernel for anything that's not currently connected to your system. So if you want to use a USB drive, for example, and you don't have it plugged in at the time that you run the make local mod config, uh, that su support for that device will not be uh, compiled into your kernel. So uh, it's something you might want to be careful about, uh, or at least, at least be aware of, but it is an option there if uh, if you use something that you would like to use. So now that we have a kernel config file in place, we can uh, proceed with customizing it to our needs. So instead of editing the .config file by hand, uh, we can use a menu-driven system to make the config changes e easier. There are several different uh, utilities we can use to accomplish this, but I'm going to use the tried and true menu config utility. Uh, we can execute that by doing a make menu config. And another advantage of using menu uh, driven kernel configuration utilities is that uh, editing the file directly opens you up to possibly making some errors that uh, are not going to uh, that are going to prevent your kernel from building so if you look through here you can see there's a ton of different options that you can use uh, to configure your kernel um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time customizing the kernel uh, I'll take a closer look at uh, configuring a custom a kernel in a later video but uh, today I just want to make a couple of changes just to demonstrate how it's done. So we've got, uh, let's say, we look at device drivers. There are certain things that I know that I don't need. And specifically, I'm doing this in a VM and I'm certainly not doing it on a Macintosh, so I can hit the space bar there to remove the Macintosh device drivers uh, from the build. And what else do we want to do? Uh, graphic support. I know I don't have an ATI Radeon, so I'm going to remove the AMD support. Don't have NVIDIA, remove that as well. Um, 
And then once you've made the configuration changes that you want, you can go over to save. And it will give you an option to specify the file name. We want to save it to our .config file, so we'll just accept the default there. And exit. Oh, is there anything else I want to do? Um, I know I'm using um, ext4 file system, so I can remove um, riserfs, I can remove jfs, xfs support, um, butterfs. I think that's enough. So let's save the config again and hop out. And our kernel is now configured with our desired specifications. So now we're ready to build the kernel. We initiate the build process by using the make command. Uh, we can use the dash j flag to uh, instruct the compiler to use multiple CPUs for compilation. Uh, I am uh, working in a virtual machine that has four cores, so I will compile using all four cores. So we'll do make dash J4 and hit enter. And the build process starts. So this process uh, will certainly take some time and uh, depending on the features that you've uh, selected to build and uh, the number of cores you're using and the speed of your CPU, the build process uh, time could vary significantly, um, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to several hours. So uh, I will now pause the video and we will come back when the process is completed. So now that the build process is complete, uh, the rest of the steps that we need to perform require root access. So let's switch over to the root account. And so now uh, we need to build the kernel modules. Um, unless that you've uh, configured your kernel to build everything internally, uh, this will be a necessary step. Uh, building the modules can be done by using make modules install. Now this will uh, build uh, any modules that uh, do not exist. Um, otherwise, it will copy the uh, modules to your uh, kernel modules uh, directory. So now let me pause the video and we'll be back when this is finished. Now that the kernel modules have been built successfully, we need to install the kernel itself. So the first thing we need to do is copy the kernel to the boot partition. So the kernel file is located at arch x86 64 boot and the name is bz image. And we want to copy that to the boot partition. And we're gonna call it vm linux dash, I'm gonna call it Linux and my version number. So it's 5.7.15. All right the kernels in place. So now we need to generate the initram fs file and we do this by using pk init cpio the 
uh, dash K flag, the version of the kernel that we've just built is 5.7.15. And we need to save this in boot. And call it init ram fs dash linux 5715 to match the name of the kernel dot img and the init ram fs has been generated so the last file we need to copy over is our system dot map file and so, let's see, let's copy system.map, and that's going to go into boot. System.map dash Linux 5715. So now we just have to let the grub bootloader uh, know about our new kernel. So we do this by generating a new grub config file. And I will do this by using grub mkconfig. And we want to output this file to boot slash grub slash grub dot config and the mk uh, no, the grub mk config uh, program will look in the boot partition and find any kernels and configure them to uh, be listed in the boot uh, in the grub boot menu uh, as startup so now for the moment of truth let's reboot and see how our custom kernel can boot the system i'll just do a reboot here and all right let's log in open up a terminal and we can check our kernel version by going uname dash a and as you can see now we have uh, kernel 5.7.15 installed on the system so we have successfully downloaded configured built and installed a new kernel and we're up and running there's obviously a lot more to configuring and optimizing a kernel than what we've gone through today. Uh, we have basically just scratched the surface, uh, but this should be enough to get you started. If there's interest, I'll consider making a follow-up video that focuses on the kernel config itself and how to go about optimizing and building a kernel that's specific to your system. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please consider liking and subscribing. We will be looking at other interesting Linux topics and posting more tutorials soon. See you later.